We're joined now on Mass and All Access by Chuck Rostano, who is in his 11th season as Notre Dame's pitching coach. Thanks so much for joining us, Chuck. We really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for having me. So you, of course, know Trey back, way back to his college days. And we know Trey Mancini as being the genuine, real, nice guy that he is uh, at the major league level. But what was Trey Mancini like in college? Was he the same guy or was he different at all? No, he's always had that personality. People just gravitated toward him. Um, always did the right thing, was always where he was supposed to be. Represented the program and the school uh, really well and uh, obviously performed at an elite level as well. We're going to talk in a little bit about you pitching to him at the Home Run Derby in a few days. But first, uh, you spoke to Rock Cabaco of MassInSports.com a few days ago, and you mentioned the story of Ricky Palmer, who was a Notre Dame catcher and a walk-on, uh, who actually was diagnosed with brain cancer and passed away just a few months ago. What was your connection to Ricky Palmer, and what was Trey's connection uh, to Ricky? I, I coached Ricky, and obviously Trey was his teammate. Um, Ricky was a year older than Trey, and Ricky was one of those guys that um, it, it, same characteristics as Trey. Everybody liked, and you couldn't believe somebody like him got dealt the hand he got dealt. Um, and as things kind of got more and more challenging for him, uh, it kind of coincided with things getting a little bit better for Trey. The last time I saw Trey in person prior to the season starting was at uh, Ricky's funeral. And since then, we've uh, established the Ricky Palmer Memorial Fund, which will uh, go to some facility enhancements here at Notre Dame, most notably uh, our locker room and part of our bullpen, which Ricky as a catcher, he made probably the biggest impact in that bullpen. So we're going to try and memorialize him there. In addition to that, we'll have a scholarship fund in his name so that next generation of Notre Dame baseball players knows Ricky's story and can appreciate uh, the depth of his impact in our program. Trey has been such an instrumental piece to that. Um, we both loved Ricky like he was our brother or kid. And uh, the fact that he's not here with us anymore uh, is really, really tough to deal with. But I'm really proud that we're all doing things to make sure his kind of legacy lives on, both within our program and outside it. Well, Chuck, I really appreciate you uh, being able to speak with us about Ricky. What does it say about Trey that while he was undergoing the toughest year of his life and going through chemotherapy treatments, that he was still able to stay connected to that Notre Dame family, and uh, now he's making an impact uh, with the future of Notre Dame baseball program uh, in the name of Ricky. Trey has always been really connected to Notre Dame. I think he identifies as a Notre Dame guy. And I think institutionally, it's part of what makes us as special as, as we are, the community, uh, independent of the success of the athletic department. Um, on so many levels, Trey is like the perfect embodiment of what we want the Notre Dame student athlete to be or our alum. Um, he comes back, he's generous with his time, he's generous with his money, um, and I, I just think that he, uh, his impact is not just because he's as successful of a baseball player as he is. He came back and got his degree when he was in the minor leagues, he really didn't have to do that, but Notre Dame meant so much to him that he wanted to finish what he started here, and um, he stays connected to some guys on our team. Um, he followed us throughout our run this year. Um, so it, it just, he really is the genuine audible. You hate to give like the cliche of like, oh, he didn't forget where he came from. It's just nice to know that uh, we're, you know, Notre Dame is still such a big part of his life, not just the institution, but the people he interacted with, he stays really connected to. And I'm obviously really thankful to be one of them. And knowing Trey like you did back when he was a player, staying connected through him after all these years, was there any doubt when you heard that he had been diagnosed with stage three colon cancer that he was going to pull out of it and that he was going to be back uh, to the major leagues and back to the Trey Mancini that we know? I said this to Rock um, 
the honest truth of it is I never thought about long-term consequence uh, outside of, okay, hey, he's on the shelf for 2020. The world is a really weird place in 2020. Uh, okay, we'll just pick this thing up in 21. Um, I don't know if that was naive. I don't know if it was a defense mechanism to not want to not want to believe what could be, but there, I'm a pretty realistic guy. Um, there wasn't a second of there wasn't a second of a day where I didn't think he'd be back. Uh, I, I never thought that there'd be long term issues. I just kind of got wrap my head around the fact that number 16 was going to be in the opening day lineup uh, when 2021 hit. It, it just never occurred to me that anything other than success was going to come out of this. So let's start talking about the home run derby here, because back in 2012, you pitched to Trey Mancini when he won the Big East uh, home run derby. What kind of memories do you have of that day and of that moment? It was fun. It was um, lots of kind of tongue in cheek. Um, it was competitive. I mean, you'd go and do that. You want to win and you, or you want to be part of the winning team. I wasn't hitting, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, I think, like, for the two of us, we're pretty, like, reasonably reserved guys, and we had fun with it. We just said, well, let's have some fun with this. Uh, it was, you know, a reasonably empty stadium, independent of some fans, lots of family members and other teams. But, I don't know, if there's going to be a winner or a loser, it was nice to kind of be, be on the winning team. So it was fun, and that's kind of where, like, the birth of um, the story of, like, hey, if I ever get there in the big leagues, you know, it's going to be you. Like, that's really where it started. Yeah, you just mentioned it there, but he did make that promise to you that probably at the time, let's be honest, were you ever thinking that far ahead, or was it something more of a fantasy for way in the future? No, I mean, at that time, it's like, all right, well, how are we going to win the Big East tournament? Um and every time we would reconnect, it would kind of like come up tongue in cheek, sarcastically, a little flippant. And uh, as he continued to progress, it became more and more, I guess, possible. And uh, yeah, th that story is real. Like it came up a lot when we would connect. And uh, when he called me and, and asked me to do it, I, you know, it's, I still really wasn't prepared for the moment, to tell you the truth. Yeah, what was your reaction when he, uh, when he called you up and told you that he was keeping his promise to you and you were going to be headed out to Denver? Uh, honest truth, I was in the Atlanta airport on my way back from a recruiting trip, and my phone rings, and it's Trey Mancini. And, like, Trey and I connect a lot via text, but, you know, he's in the middle of the season. Like, we're not on the phone with each other an awful lot. And one of the first things he said was, hey, listen, uh, this isn't public yet. And in that, in, in however long it took him to say that, like the rush of emotions comes in because you don't know if it's going to be bad or good news. I know it sounds horrible, uh, but in a split second there, you kind of get like the little shock. And then when he explains what's going on, um, you know, it's like whew, big sigh of relief into exhilaration and excitement and you do your best to compose yourself in the middle of the Delta terminal in Atlanta, uh, which is not an easy place to stay composed. Uh, and yeah, he said, you know, Hey, um, it's quiet for now. I wanted to give you as much time as I could to talk to, you know, your boss and your wife. And uh, I said, awesome. You know, I want anybody. And I got on the plane and it took me the whole plane ride to kind of like process. And uh, when I got off the plane, it had hit publicly already. So I was like, all right, well, cats out of the bag but uh yeah it was it was really cool uh, it's been a while since I've gotten like that kind of phone call surprise exhilaration um and you know then it turned into like oh okay we're, we're really doing this uh so I'm thrilled yeah what what kind of preparation have you been doing or will you do as you get ready to throw to him are you warming up or are you practicing from a certain distance or are you just going to go out there and wing it um, well, I'm throwing. Uh, I have to be really careful on campus, like who I throw to. We have some players on campus, but I actually had to call compliance today and say, hey, look, am I allowed to throw to these guys? Is this some sort of a violation? So I may end up having to throw to some of our staff members. I don't know. Um, but I want to make sure I'm kind of 
laying it in there throughout the course of our season. I threw quite a bit um, and I'm left handed. So anytime we faced a left handed pitcher, I would throw. But, you know, it's been a few weeks since we last played going up until Denver and my recruiting calendar doesn't allow me to have as much time as I'd like to continue to keep throwing. Uh, so I'm thinking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll try and dial it in. But the last time I threw a pitch to Trey was 2013, the season of 2013. So a lot of things have happened between then and now. So I'm hoping we can kind of reconnect like, uh, you know, like two old friends who haven't seen each other in a while and they just pick up the same conversation. You know, that's my hope. And Trey's numbers against lefties are outstanding at the big league level. So let, let's hope that that translates as well. But uh, best of luck, Chuck. Thank you so much for hopping on Mass and All Access, being honest and candid with us, telling your story and Trey's story. We really appreciate the time. And of course, good luck in Denver throwing to uh, Trey Mancini in the Home Run Derby. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of us. We'll try and make you guys proud. I appreciate it.